Hi, so we've been working on that wind turbine, as you know, but this thing has not been forgotten. I've also done some work on this. Now, in 1119 and 1120, we built this and gave details on this particular structure here, because this is the interesting bit about it. It's a single coil. Now, that might not seem too exciting, but think about how it would be if you had to wind all of those little coils and get them there. This took no time at all to wind one big coil. Now, I wound it originally from too thick a wire, so I've rewound this with 28 SWG instead of 18 SWG, and here it is. It's about two kilos of wire on. I'm sorry, I have forgotten the number of turns, but it's a 26 inch wheel, so you can get roughly how many turns there are on there. Anyway, I've wound it with a thinner wire. Now, as we know, the thinner the wire, the higher the voltage, the lower the ampage. So we should get a reasonable voltage out of this this time. The other thing that I looked at that was really interesting was the magnet arrangement. Now, when we took this, we took this as um, really a prototype from a turntable motor where you have one half north and one half south. And we didn't know what kind of magnet arrangement would work. So I tried north, south, north, south, north, south, going all around the rim. And I also tried half north, half south. And something really interesting happens. If you do north, south, north, south, north, south, then the voltage goes up, but the amperage remains the same. If you do half north, half south, the voltage remains the same, but the amps go up, which is amazing, really. So as guidance on how to build this thing, if you're gonna build it as a generator, you need lots of turns of thinner wire. If you're going to build it as a motor, you need less turns of thicker wire. The voltage and the ampage are affected by the magnet arrangement. You can either do half the wheel north, half the wheel south, or alternate your magnets north, south, north, south. Either's good, but they will actually have that effect. Now, we're going to spin this bad boy up and see what it does. And I've actually only got four magnets either side. There's four there, and there's four on its opposite side there. Uh, because I don't have any of the magnets. I've had some more, I'd put more on. That's what we've got. I'm going to spin it up, and I've got the meter here with its capped on tape so you can read it. It's actually kind of cool. Ha <laughs> ha! 10.7 volts when I read it. But that's probably what, 11 volts coming out of that? So we've got 11 volts coming out of those eight magnets on there, on that flywheel with that 20, uh, 28SWG wire. That's pretty awesome, actually. We swap it over to the amps. We get about, I don't know, five milliamps or so. Okay, so I've got it on the milliamp reading. Let's spin it up and see what happens. About four milliamps. <laughs> yeah, 4.1. Okay, that's really cool. Now let's put it on something and see it do some work. I've got an LED panel here. We clip up the LED panel. at all getting that to light. And of course that'll stay lit as long as this can produce the voltage and amperage to do that. So what's good about this, like I say, is really this coil arrangement. That's the really cool thing. The flywheel, they're great for energy storage. But the coil arrangement works a treat. So we make that big coil with the folded over metal that we looked at in 1119 and 1120. Thinner wire, magnets in half north, half south, and you're going to have yourself a pretty impressive flywheel generator. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you because I finally got that done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.